Hi there, welcome once again to the Dukascopy TV studio here in Geneva. I'm Ben Jones. Alongside me to discuss some of the issues facing expats in Geneva is Nir Ofek. Nir, thank you very much for joining us today. Pleasure, thanks for having me. So, can you begin just by simply outlining some of the main issues that face expats here in Geneva? Sure. I base what I'm going to say uh, based on some of the content that we see on our social network. Daily posts from people who have just arrived and talk about the stuff that's good for them and talk about the stuff that's less good for them. And there are some issues that they face which I think are relevant for every new city you move to in the world, but also some issues which are really Geneva specific. The ones that are relevant for every new city is people move in and they need to quickly, if they have kids, understand which are the good schools and bad schools and they need to meet people and they know where to do their shopping and they need to speak the language. But these are all problems which I think anyone who's moved into any new city would know what I'm talking about. But there are some Geneva specific ones. The first one we hear about, and I'm sure any one of your, uh, of your viewers who has moved to Geneva has faced this, is finding an apartment in Geneva. It's really a big deal. I'm not sure of the exact numbers, but some of the stuff that I've seen around is that the occupancy rate in Geneva, which means the apartments that are on the market at any given time, is around 0.2%, whereas a healthy real estate market where people move in and out and there is a decent weight for an apartment is about 3% occupancy. So we're at 0.2 compared to 3, which means that people that come here have to wait a long time and have to go through a serious search on average before they find an apartment. And that's problem number one that a lot of them face. They arrive and there's just nothing out there. Problem two is probably linked to uh, an unrealistic expectation of daily life in Switzerland and in Geneva. Some people expect that they come here and there is, uh, you can walk in the street while leaving your wallet unlocked in your car and your car unlocked and uh, flashing gold like this and nothing's going to happen. So people have this expectation that Switzerland is an ultra safe place. And you know what, it's a relatively safe place, but it's just like any other city. There is crime, and it's rising, and people still haven't adjusted their expectations. So a lot of people move over here expecting a paradise with zero crime, and they just see a city that is a normal city which has normal crime rates. The third issue a lot of people talk about is the prices. Geneva is an expensive place, and every research that we see, it ranks number one or number two or number three in the cost of living. And a lot of people are in shock, especially when they come from lower cost places. They see the prices of everyday things, not just apartments, but a Big Mac at McDonald's or a parking ticket. And they're in shock at how expensive prices are. Of course, salaries are adjusted to that as well. But the initial reaction is shock at the prices they see. And those are the top things that we see. Okay, now you've mentioned obviously an apartment. Renting is very difficult when people come to Geneva, but is it simply uh, the fact that there's not that much availability or is there a lot of paperwork? And also, can you discuss some of the ways that they can overcome these issues? The real issue is simply a, a supply and demand. There's just not enough supply out there. There is uh, more and more people coming in and the new construction is not caught up with it. So the real, the heart of the issue is simply that there's not enough supply. But there's a few ways at least to better your situation. You're, you're gonna have to, fit to deal with that not enough supply in any case, but there's a few ways to better that. Some of, them is, or some of it is linked to paperwork. The process here when you want to rent an apartment is you go see the place. You do a search, just like I guess you would do in any other place, online, on newspapers, you find the apartment that you want. And then you submit what they call over here your dossier, your file. You submit that to the owner of the place. Like you, there is probably 20 or 30 other people who have submitted their file to the same guy. Now, the competition to this place, you'd expect it to be over money. If the rent is one, and you would suggest two, and the other person would suggest three, the guy who suggested three would get the apartment. But the competition over here is not on pricing. The price is set, and people start applying for it, all on the same price. And the guy then has to select one person out of these 30. And you need to make your application the most attractive to this guy. And this guy is looking for a few things. At the basis of it, he's looking to see that you're a tenant that's going to pay on time and that's not going to give him problems. But most people who apply for a certain place know that this is the basic requirement. So 90% of people meet that. But you need to make sure already you're amongst those 90%. Don't let this guy know that you're any payment risk. Show him your work for a big company if you do. If you don't, show him uh, your bank account. There's a way to show this guys, these guys that you're not a, uh, a risk. But that puts you only in the 90% that are still in the competition. Only 10% fall. 
Then it's a question of making yourself stand out with this application. You can do that in a few ways. One is a lot of people attach a, uh, a reference letter or a, a sort of motivation letter. Just like when you apply for a job, you apply for the apartment over here. And you tell this guy, why should you give me the apartment? And you can talk about the fact that you're going to pay on time and who you work for and that you're a low risk. But you can also try to get some sob story in there to tell the guy, this is why I should get this apartment. It's close to my kid's school. It's close to my uh, ex-wife's place so the kids could see her. It's close to my sick mom. Give him something that your application stands out. So that cover letter is really important. Another thing you can use, like everywhere else in the world, is connections. If you know someone who knows the owner, or who you know someone who knows the, uh, the management company who manages the building for it, use him. Use that person, use that content, use that contact. Get that content on the application, it can help. A couple of more quick tips that we see that work. When you see a place you want, apply quickly. In other markets, you can wait, you can do the search. Here, you're going to have to compromise. So if you see a place that's 80% there, don't wait for the 100%. Apply on the spot. And the last tip is prepare yourself mentally, and maybe when you negotiate with the company that moves you over here, for a potential three months wait from when you arrive to when you find an apartment. It's not going to be fast, and you need to be prepared for that. If you can negotiate that with the company moving you over here to put you up in a hotel or in an apartment, do it because it's very likely you're going to have at least three months of wait before you find the place you want. Fantastic. And finally, can you outline some of your top tips for overall integration into Geneva for new people moving to Geneva? Yeah. First, you've got to get out of your comfort zone, at least after a certain period. Or what, what we usually see, people arrive, and the, the knee-jerk reaction, which is natural and which everyone does, including me, is to stick with the people that you know the people that come from your country, the people that speak your language, the people that work for your own company. That's the comfort zone and that's the easiest thing. And that's what people naturally gravitate to the first few weeks when they're here. Some people do the mistake of sticking with that clientele or with that crowd for years. And it's really hard to break out of it because it's your comfort zone. So my first tip to you is do that. The first months, the first weeks, go with what's easy. But keep in mind, you really need to break out of it if you ever really want to feel like a local and you don't want to feel like an expat for, the re for an expat for the rest of your time living abroad. Uh, after that, you know, if, if mentally you make the switch of, all right, I'm going to break out from just being with the people from my own nationality, there's ways of doing that. But the biggest challenge, get that switch in your head, I want to break out. Yeah, fantastic. Thank you very much for joining thank us, you. Ken. And thank you for watching. Do make sure you keep clicking back to Dukascopy TV, as we'll be bringing you plenty more updates and exclusive interviews. Bye for now.